Hello friends. Welcome, to our YouTube channel, Succinct, The Books in Summaries. Today we are learn from the book Thinking Fast and Slow which is written by Daniel Kahneman. And we also learn that how our thinking process impact on our decision making process. Daniel Kahneman is a retired professor of psychology and public affairs from Princeton University, and a member of many prestigious organizations. He was named the seventh most influential economist in the world by The Economist in 2015, and in 2002 he won a Nobel Prize in Economic Sciences. Let's know about, what is our brain system? Thinking, fast and slow explains that our brain has two systems of thinking, System 1, and System 2. System 1 is quick and emotional, while System 2 is slower and more logical. The author suggests we rely less on System 1 as it can lead to mistakes and stagnation. Instead, we should use System 2 more often. The book also provides advice on decision making. Succinct number 1 is System 1, which is innate. System 1 is a natural part of our brain, that we share with other animals. It's responsible for recognizing objects, paying attention, to important things, and fearing things, that are associated with death or disease. It also deals with, mental activities, that become automatic over time through practice, such as reading, riding a bike, and social interactions. Additionally, it includes automatic associations, like knowing the capital of England without thinking about it. Certain actions, that are typically part of System 1 can also be moved into System 2, if you make a deliberate effort to engage with them. For instance, chewing food is typically an automatic function of system 1. However, if you become aware that you need to chew more slowly or thoroughly, some of your chewing behavior, will shift into the more effortful system 2. Both system 1 and system 2, are involved in our attention. System 1 generates an immediate response to things, like a loud noise, while System 2 takes over to give voluntary attention and provide logical reasoning, about the cause of the sound, the two systems work together to process information and make decisions. System 1 is an intuitive decision-making system, that filters your experiences. It's an unconscious and impulse-driven system, that is the oldest brain system evolutionarily. Although, you may not realize it, System 1 influences many of your choices and judgments. Succinct number 2 is System 2, can control parts of System 1 System 2 is a group of tasks that need your focus. If you're distracted, your performance in these tasks will suffer. System 2 can influence System 1, which is responsible for automatic actions. For instance, you can prime System 1, to look for a particular person in a group, making it more efficient. It's similar to how we do word searches. System 2 tasks need focus and are harder than System 1 tasks. It's difficult to do multiple System 2 tasks at once, except for low effort tasks like talking while driving. But, it's not safe to multitask during high effort tasks, like overtaking a truck on a narrow road. The more focus a task requires, the harder it is to do another System 2 task at the same time. System 2 is a newer development, evolving over the last few thousand years. It's crucial for adapting to modern times and changing priorities. System 2 needs conscious attention for most of its functions, like giving out your phone number. It's linked to personal agency, choice, and focus. When we think of ourselves, we identify with System 2, because it's the conscious, decision-making part of us that has beliefs and decides what to do. Succinct number 3, the two systems support each other. Both systems are interwoven and supportive, and most tasks require both. Emotions, in System 1, are vital in logical reasoning, in System 2. And playing sports requires both systems. Running and hitting a ball are automatic, in System 1, while tactical decisions need focus, in System 2. Over-reliance on System 1 can lead to problems, especially in unfamiliar situations. Both systems can conflict in such cases. Succinct number 4, Heuristics as Mental Shortcuts. 
The second part of the book talks about heuristics, which are shortcuts we use to make decisions. They save time and energy, and help us to apply past experiences, in a new situations. But relying solely on heuristics, can lead to prejudice and stereotypes. It can also cause cognitive biases, which are errors in thinking, that can lead to bad decisions or misunderstandings. Succinct number 5, the biases we create in our own minds. Kahneman introduces eight common biases and heuristics that can lead to poor decision making. First is, the law of small numbers, the law of small numbers means we often believe that small groups or samples, are the same as the larger population they come from. We think, small samples are more reliable, than they are. For example, if a drug works for 80% of patients, we might assume that, 4 out of 5 people will respond, if only 5 people take it. But in reality, the chance that exactly 4 people will respond, out of a sample of 5, is only 41%. Second, it is, anchoring bias. Anchoring, is when people rely heavily on the first piece of information, they receive when making a decision. This can cause bias in decision making. For example, if you see a t-shirt that costs $1,200, and then see another one, that costs $100, you might think the second one is not good quality, because you were anchored by the first high price. But if you had seen the $100 t-shirt first, you might think it was a good deal. The first piece of information you received, which is anchor, had a big influence on your decision. The third is Priming bias, our minds connect words and things, which makes us susceptible to priming. This means that, anything can lead us to a certain decision. Priming is used in advertising and nudges, where positive images are used to associate a product with certain feelings. For instance, Nike uses slogans, like, just do it, and supports athletes to evoke feelings of exercise and success. A restaurant owner can also prime customers, to buy Italian wine, by playing Italian music in the background. Fourth it is, cognitive ease. Something is easy for our brain to understand, we are more likely to believe it. When we hear, or see something multiple times, it becomes familiar to us, and our brain finds it easier to process. This can happen, even if we know it's not true. For example, if we hear fake news, from many people around us, it can become easy for our brain, to believe it, even if we know it's not true. Fifth is, jumping to conclusions. According to author, our quick thinking, system one, tends to jump to conclusions, based on the information that is readily available, even if it is not entirely accurate. This is because, we often rely on the information, that is most obvious or easily accessible, instead of taking the time, to gather more information. As a result, we can be influenced by things, like our initial impressions of people or situations, our tendency, to look for information that confirms our beliefs, and the way information is presented to us. These biases can lead us, to make faulty conclusions, and stick to them, even when faced with evidence to the contrary. The author also talked about the halo effect. The halo effect is, when we think someone or something has many good qualities, because of one positive impression. For instance, we might believe that, a person is smarter than they actually are just because they are good looking. Sixth it is, confirmation bias, is when you only look for information, that supports your beliefs, and ignore anything that contradicts them. For instance, a detective might only look for evidence, that confirms their early suspicions about a suspect, rather than considering other possibilities. Social media can amplify this bias by using algorithms, that only show users, information they are likely to agree with, rather than exposing them, to different viewpoints. Framing effects. Framing effects, refer to how the situation around a problem, can impact how people act. For instance, individuals generally stay away from risks when given positive options, and look for risks, 
when given negative choices. In a study, when PhD students were told, there was a penalty for registering late. 93% of them registered early. However, when the same situation was presented, as a discount for early registration, only 67% of the students registered early. Base rate. Base rate neglect is when we focus too much on specific information about a person or event and not enough on objective, statistical information. We tend to rely too heavily on individual details and ignore the bigger picture. This can lead to mistakes, such as assuming someone has a certain characteristic just because they fit a stereotype. The false positive paradox is an example of base rate neglect where there are more false positives than true positives. We need to consider both individual details and statistical information to make accurate judgments. Seventh it is availability bias. Availability bias is when we rely too much on something that is prominent in our minds such as a recent event or a vivid experience to make decisions. This bias affects people who rely more on their automatic, intuitive thinking, which is system one. For instance, if you hear about a plane crash on the news, you might think that your upcoming flight is also unsafe, even though the two events are not related. Eight is the sunk cost fallacy. The sunk cost fallacy is when people keep investing in something that is already losing, even if there are better options available. For instance, investors might hold onto a stock that is losing value just because they paid a high price for it, even though they could sell it and invest in something better. This fallacy also applies to relationships and gambling, where people hold onto things even when they are harmful because they have already invested so much time and effort into them. To avoid this fallacy, it's best to recognize when something is not working and be willing to let it go. Succinct number six. Regression to the mean. Regression to the mean is a statistical concept that means things will usually go back to average over time. However, people often think that lucky or unlucky streaks will continue even when the odds are against them. This mistaken belief is connected to various mental biases that author has identified. Expert intuition. Sometimes, using well-designed computer programs is better than relying on human experts and their gut feelings. Planning fallacy is when people think that something will turn out better than it actually will just because they planned for it that way. Optimism and the entrepreneurial delusion. Basically, people who start their own businesses often have unrealistic optimism. They think they will do better than other businesses and ignore the competition. Succinct number seven. Hindsight significantly influences decision making. Looking back at past events can greatly impact how we make decisions. Author explains that humans have a limited understanding of our own past experiences and hindsight bias negatively affects decision making. This bias makes people evaluate decisions based on their outcomes rather than the decision making process itself. This bias can be especially harsh on decision makers who act on behalf of others such as doctors or politicians. We tend to blame decision makers for good decisions that have bad outcomes and we give them too little credit for successful actions that only seem obvious in hindsight. This bias generally leads to risk aversion, but it can also reward irresponsible risk takers who happen to be lucky. For example, entrepreneurs who take big risks and happen to succeed. Lucky leaders are never punished for taking too much risk. Succinct number eight. Risk aversion. Author observes that humans are generally risk averse, meaning we try to avoid taking risks whenever possible. This is because people dislike the possibility of getting the worst possible outcome. For instance, when presented with the choice between a gamble and a guaranteed amount, 
that is equal to the expected value of the gamble, most people will choose the guaranteed amount. The expected value is, calculated by multiplying each possible outcome, by its likelihood of occurring, and adding up all those values. Risk-averse decision-makers, will typically choose the guaranteed option, even if it's less than the expected value of the risk. In essence, they are willing to pay, a premium to avoid uncertainty. Succinct number 9. Loss aversion. Author talks about loss aversion, which means, that people are more motivated, to avoid losses, than to achieve gains. When making decisions, that involve both the possibility of losing, and gaining something, people tend to focus, more on avoiding the loss, than on achieving the gain. People usually compare their current situation, or a future goal, with the potential outcome of a decision. Failure aversion is much stronger, than motivation, to achieve a goal, so people tend to set short-term goals, that they are likely to achieve, instead of aiming higher. They may even reduce their efforts, when they have met, their immediate goals. People attach more value to gains and losses, rather than just the amount of money or wealth, they have. This means that, people may take desperate risks, when faced with terrible options, even if, the risk of making things worse is high. In wars, for example, the losing side may continue to fight, even if victory is impossible, because accepting defeat is so difficult. This kind of risk-taking, can turn, manageable failures, into disasters. Succinct number 10. Do not trust your preferences, to reflect your interests. Suggests that, people often assume their decisions, are in their best interest, but this is not always true. Memories can be inaccurate, and misinterpreted, which can affect the choices people make. This means that, decisions don't always lead to the best outcomes, which challenges the idea, that people always make rational choices. People can't fully trust, their preferences, to reflect their best interests, even, if they are based on personal experiences, and recent memories. Succinct number 11. Memories shape our decisions. Our memories have a significant influence, on our decisions, but, they can be unreliable. Our minds are designed, to have preferences, for how long we experience, pain and pleasure. We want pain, to be brief, and pleasure to last longer. However, our memories, which are part of our fast and intuitive, system one thinking, tend to focus, on the most intense moments of an episode of, pain or pleasure. This can neglect, the duration of the experience, which is not consistent, with our preferences, for long-lasting pleasures, and short-lived pains. In simple terms, our happiness, cannot be easily summed up, by a single number, because, it depends on, various factors. Positive, and negative, emotions can coexist, and our mood, can change, throughout the day, or week, depending on our temperament. Overall, happiness, and current situation. Finally, thinking, fast and slow, outlines the way, that all human minds work. We all have two systems, that support each other, and work in tandem. The issue is, when we rely too heavily, on our quick, and impulsive, system one. This over-reliance, leads to, a wide range of biases, that can, negatively influence decision making. The key is, to understand where these biases come from, and use our analytical system too. To keep our system one in check. Thanks for watching. Do hit the like button, and subscribe, our YouTube channel, for more videos. Give us feedback, on comment section below.